Hello there, um, today we're going to be showing you how to make a saving and loading system for your incremental game with HTML and JS. This is part 3, a tutorial on how to make your own incremental game using HTML and CSS. Where we left off last episode was we made our game look a little bit better, give it a little more CSS so it doesn't look like that horde thing we had before. So we could buy buildings and all that. Now, but the problem is, if we reload the page, none of our stuff is saved. So in this tutorial, we're going to go over how to save and how to load your game from a cookie, which is basically just stored in the person's browser. Okay, so what you need to do first is you need to open up your text editor um, to the file you had before, and then you're going to scroll down to your JavaScript. Okay, so first thing first on how to save your game. Let's make a quick function just below the center interval. Let's name it function save game. Okay. So in it, we're going to have something with called a somewhat of an object. And let's more classify it as a filing cabinet. So we're going to define our filing cabinet var game save equal to squiggly bracket and then go to the next line, squiggly bracket. And then semicolon. Basically, in this filing cabinet, we're going to have files, and these files are going to have variables. So let's define the file score, and let's set it to this game score. Okay. So basically, we have a filing cabinet game save, and then we have a folder named score, and then inside the folder is your player score. So if I wanted to say alert. <coughs> game save dot score it would show what the current person's score is because it's set to our score so basically you put the object dot and then the variable you're trying to get so filing cabinet and then the file okay and in this we're going to set the clicking power basically what we're doing we're putting everything we want saved all the variables we want saved into here so we put clicking power, cursor cost, cursor cost, cursors, cursors, and then you're basically going to repeat this for the rest of your buildings or anything, all the variable you want to save. So I'm just going to copy and paste it. So basically your folder is going to look like your finally cabinet or your var game save is going to look something like this. Make sure to always put a comma after every line to show that there is another variable after, but do not put it after the last one. Okay, then we're going to get to the object local storage, which is just the, which is the cookies thing that is located right here. That is the local storage dot set item. Game save. So we're storing our game save into cookies. And then json.stringify game save. So basically, this is going to make it into a string so it can actually be inputted. And it's not going to input it like this. It's going to put it in a JSON file, which is just a file format to store variables and stuff. So this is your save game. Now let's create a new function just below our center interval. We're going to set a new interval. So, but we're going to set the time to be 30,000, which is about 30 seconds. So 30,000 ms equals 30 seconds. You don't have to put this. This is just a call to comment. It doesn't affect any code whatsoever. So I don't necessarily have to have it. And in it, we're going to have a save game. What's your name with that? Every 30 seconds, it'll save the game. But for now, we are going to add a quick button right here. Button on click equals save game. And then save game. Okay. So then we can reload, and you see we have the save game button. So let's click a little bit. Uh, yeah, we have one grandma. You can click save game. You look, we now have a cookie one in use, which is the local host and the local storage, and then from our website, which is what we want. So, 
Once they're done with that, we want to make a load game function. Since now we have a save game, we should be able to load it now since we have it saved. Okay. In order to do that, we need to make a new function, load game. Then we need to basically get the game save item in the local storage. So in order to do that, we need to do some vars. We need a set of variables, saved game equals json.parse local storage dot get item and then game save. Okay, so what this is doing is it's because since it's been into a JSON right here, we need to unparse the variable. So since we inputted the parse, we need to get the parse out of it. And basically we're getting the item game save, which is the same as here. So we're going into the local storage and then we're getting the item game save or the cookies and getting the game save. So then do an if statement. Now, so since we have the folder, we basically have this saved game dot score. We have all those variables. It's just different. So what we need to do if type of saved game dot score not equal undefined score equals saved game dot score. So basically, this is making sure that the saved game score, that the score is actually set in the item. So if you ever do any updates to the game, this will make sure that it is defined. If it's not undefined, if it's not undefined, then it's going to set the score to the saved game score. So this is making sure it's set so it doesn't your game doesn't throw any errors just because you're loading like an old version. Let's say you add in a new building in the next version and it doesn't have it, it's going to throw some errors. So this is just to prevent errors. And basically you're going to do this for all of your variables you put in the saved game here. And then just paste them right here. So uh, you can pause the video right now and copy that over, but I'm going to move on. Okay, so once you have the load game function done, what you need to do is we need to add a new onload event. So window.onload equals function and then semicolon after that. So what this is doing is basically whenever the window, which is basically the whole browser is the window. So like this whole thing is loaded. Once everything's loaded, it is going to execute this function. So everything in between these squiggly brackets will be executed. So let's just do load game. That's all you need. So then we can reload. As you can see, it takes a second to update. And then you have to update all that. So the problem is we have to do stuff in order to update the game, right? So what we can do is this is a very easy fix. We can call the update score per second function right after the load game. So let's see what happens. And you see, this is updated right away. So basically what we have to do is we have to update everything. So we can go up, copy all the stuff all the stuff you want updated so from like all the buildings and stuff and paste it right there. This is so once everything is basically pasted we can go back into our website save the game and as you see no matter what it's going to say seven. So I updated all this. Okay. So yeah. So first things first we want to get rid of this button really quick because we don't want them to save that way. But let's say the player really wanted to save right away because they had to leave and they don't want to wait 30 seconds for their game to save. Well what they can do is they can do control S, but the problem with control S is going to show all of this. You don't want that to happen. So what we, we can do is we can override that or we want to prevent from that control S the saving function the default function to be cast called. In order to do that, we can do this: document dot add listener dot add event listener parenthesis quote key down 
quote, comma, function, event. What this is doing is going into the document object, which in, if you don't know the document element is basically the body, that's the document element, and then it's adding an event listener. So whenever the key down, whenever a key is pressed, it will execute this function with an argument, which is event, which is basically just the key code. A key code is a key on the keyboard that every key on the keyboard has like a certain number. It basically just tells the code which key you pressed. So if we didn't have this, we wouldn't know what key was pressed, which would be very bad. So like for, yeah. So let's do if event. We'll start if statement, if event, control key. So basically if the event control is pressed, so if the control key is pressed, and event dot which equals 83, which is basically saying if the control and the S key is pressed, then it's going to execute. So if control and S are pressed, then we need to do event dot prevent default. So this is going to, so if I try pressing control S right now, it's not going to do it because it's preventing the default, which is what we want. Okay, so then what we can do next is we can do it's nice function save game. So now you see I'm at 12,000. Let's buy some ovens. Uh, okay, so we have these numbers. I press Control S, refresh. We still have those numbers because the thing saved our game. So before we finish this, we need to add a reset game function in case the player wanted to reset a game. So function reset game. Okay, we're gonna start. Now we wanna make sure that if they press the button, we gotta confirm that they wanna reset just in case if they accidentally press it. So in order to do that, we can do if confirm, are you sure you want to reset your game? So what this is going to do is going to send a confirm dialog basically with an OK and cancel to make sure if they want to reset their game. This is only executed if the player or the user presses OK. So to show this, we'll go into our section footer of the element right below salsa clicker. We can do a button on click equals reset game. We're going to keep this one because it's not really in the way, as you can see. So if we press it, we appear to have an error. Oh, I spelled on click wrong, I put on look. Okay, so if you try again, it'll say, are you sure you want to reset your game? And only, the code will only be executed if you press OK. So, so after that, we're gonna do var game save equals that. And then local storage dot set item game save json dot stringify game save. Okay, so what this is doing is basically setting an empty variable and then we're putting that empty variable into our local storage. So then after that, we could do location dot reload because if we didn't. So basically, it's going to take an empty variable, put it in the thing, and it's going to reload. If we didn't reload, then it wouldn't work. Like, it would stay on the page, and then this function right over here, once the 30 seconds, it would just resave their game. So this is basically forcing the game to restart. So in order to do that, this is also a reason why we had all these if type of save game, because now these things are undefined, and we don't want the game to just not work, so we have to have... These are very important, and this is very important. This is very important. Okay, so then you can reload, reset game. Are you sure you want to receive game? Press OK, and that happens. And now you have a save, a reset game function. Now let's say if they put cancel, it wouldn't get like that. You can reload after you save. You could do whatever you want, but now, we have it so you can load and save your game. Now let's say if you have 
more than the oven building, what you could do is basically you would just copy th these two into the update function. Then you would add the variables to here, add them to here, and add them to here. That is a lot of work. So next tutorial, we're gonna go over how to make the buildings way easier to add so you can have as many buildings you want without having to deal with all the hassle of having them. So until then, we're going to end this tutorial. Thank you for watching and hopefully this helps you. So the next tutorial, we are going to make this a whole lot easier to add buildings. So we are going to rewrite some code. So yeah, see ya. Have a nice day.